Hey guys, welcome back to Chia's world. Today we are going to discuss about a poem named Look We Have Coming to Tower is a poem written by Daljit Nagra. This poem considers immigration to the United Kingdom, the development of cultures when they mix in different countries. Daljit Nagra was born in London in 1966. He examines the idea of Britishness and Asian cultures and the different ways in which they combine and change within society. He is a British poet. His debut collection, Look We Have Coming to Dover, a title alluding to W. H. Auden's Look Strangers. D. H. Lawrence, Look We Have Come Through and highly influential to Matthew Arnold's Dover Beat. His Sikh Punjabi parents came to Britain from India in the late 1950s. In 1988, he went to study for BA and MA in English at Royal Holloway at University of London. He lives in London and works as a secondary school English teacher. His poems are lively hymns to the richness of everyday life. His dramatic monologues awash with mishearings and linguistic confusions. Identity and society are the important themes. There is a contrast between the arrival of the immigrant and the presence of tourists. Daljit Nagra teaches poetry at Brunel University, London. At the age of 19, he first picked up a book of poems. It was William Blake's Simple Yet Complex, Songs of Innocence and Experience, a book of poems by William Blake. This evoked him to the power of poetry. It inspired him to study English literature. He was the first poet to win forward prize for both his first collection of poetry in 2007 and for its title poem, Look We Have Coming to Dover, three years later. He has described this poem as obsessed with Asianness and this can be seen in poems that use Punjabi inflected English narratives involving casual racism and characters who seek the cultural signals of ladus, saris, etc. In this poem, he takes models from acknowledged classics of English knowledge, poetry using Samuel Heaney and Matthew Arnold as predecessors varying relation to Britain. This poem is full of humor and charm craft is an important element to Nagra's poetry. He explores or examines the realities of multiculturalism in Britain. He uses the experience of his family as a first and second generation of immigrants who migrated from India. He narrates inspirational stories of integration, isolation, racial tension and redemption. Daljit Nagra does not conceal his minority status in any way as he flaunts or displays it proudly in every word he conjures. His poetry is rich in culture, complex in nature and poetically sharp and precise. This poem possesses a human nature that connects to readers of all races in a deep and concise manner. He does not abandon his native form of speech. Nagra explores love, grief, hope, marriage, fatherhood, prejudice, always maintaining a captivating or attractive aspect of his complex writing. This poem also considered the uncertainty of the modern world which is very much in keeping with look we have coming to tower. Many word choices throughout the poem are important due to their variety of negative connotation. This includes phrases such as diesel breeze which alludes to pollution and environmental damage as a result of traveling 
harsh and unpleasant industry heavy areas there is also the personification of the wind and the rain wind and rain is described as yobish that means noisy or aggressive now we are going to describe about the summary of the poem in the first stanza of the poem the speaker describes about the view of an immigrant about the english shore in britain alfresco is an italian word in the first stanza the poet describes the coming of immigrants to england with great expectation and hope they set foot on the shore of england lash alfresco means the sudden quick moment of diesel smelling breeze the speaker notices the diesel smelling breeze and the immigrants who set their foot on the shore of england the diesel smelling breeze welcomed the immigrants like a lash the tide is moving or the waves are created by wind or breeze so here the diesel smelling breeze creates tides or waves the tourists immigrants or dirty water comes and go according to the rise and fall or coming of waves the tourists are on the front part of the cruisers or ship tourists are like lords in the ship and waves are ministered or obeyed or obedient according to the poet the waves are decorated with the cruisers or the warships tide is moving in with terrifying diesel smelling breeze and with a brunt gobble of surf to make progress for better future the immigrants set their foot in england in order to make progress in life the immigrants have to fight against the shore on england their life is filled with fear dream and hard work in order to reach their destination they have to work hard the speaker tries to describe the cliffs that are filled with scums the immigrants are camouflaged they do not show their original identity or true color or true nature they are making noise and wherever they like or whatever they like they are doing language is a not not a problem for them here the speaker noticing notices the movement of immigrants the immigrants do not reveal their true color like the vast crumble of scummed cliffs they want to settle there in england and they want to make progress in their life that's why they came to england when the cliff is covered with scums we do not know its true color like that the true colors of immigrants were not exposed now the immigrants are making noise like that of seagull and shore life though language is a barrier to them they are create creating noise the wind and rain are described as yobish here we can see the personification of wind to the human characters it means violent aggressive and noisy inside a bedford van they are hats hatched or enclosed their only impression is to reach their destination that is to be the citizens of england bedford van means a well known piece of british culture throughout the 20th century many war time vehicles are branded as bedford van yobish rain wind and thunder together called as the tempest the tempest or the storm follows or chases the immigrants when they get to reach england when they reached england they made a tent for their temporary existence the tent built by immigrants when they reach england for their temporary existence is what is meant by huddled camouflage by our poet daljit nagra bedford van is an old van used for traveling which were sold in the 1960s and 1970s the word mulch thunder crumble hatched and summed create intensity to the poem the immigrants want to settle there when they arrive in england they did not want to be belittled condemned or to be bullied by british people in england immigrants when they settled there they began to farm there and began to start raping but there is no one to help them no one asked them who they are 
like the citizens of england they are farming and reaping their farms they came there in seek of safety and prosperity seasons and years were taken to reap that is to bring progress into the lives of immigrants in land in order to make the land fertile without the observation by the people of england the immigrants take long time to immigrate into england or it takes seasons and years to reap that is to make progress in their lives or in order to make the, their land fertile they take many years or seasons the in the inland parks are burdened or enabled by pylon pylon means huge gigantic towers that holds electric lines above the ground and give them power inland park that would be nice but it is burdened or disturbed by acknowledged a and civilization inland park is burdened and nobled one time it is burdened due to civilization and acknowledgement or technology at the same time it is also ennobled ennobled means make making noble like every man has creative as well as destructive power each and every coin has two sides like that in this poem inland park has two sides the immigrants when they came to england they are abandoned by the citizens of england by the word swarm here poet means to be filled with full of immigrants or england is filled with full of immigrants grafting means combine or unite according to the poet the immigrants are under the observation of the natural world there is only a lesser amount of light or dim light in the night the dark spotlight of the night that is the moon and on the other side there is sun it represents the hopes they are living a hard life in england they want to lead a luxurious life like that of natives in england here the poet states that the immigrants are in a confused state because there is a dark spotlight or moon on one side and miracle brightening of sun on the other side here sun is the representation of hope and few fortune the immigrants have a lot of hopes or wishes in order to make their life colorful no one can make any change in the case of natural resources the poet wants to describe the immigrants as insects so he used the word swarms up passport is a travel document it is distributed by a country's government to its citizens the immigrants want to lead a colorful life that's why poet referred it to rainbow poet believes that everything that is unnatural is considered to be inhuman like polluting the air the immigrants would be bare faced that means they are without any makeup about who they are they want a positive change and wanted to be treated as humans the typical view of britain as a rainy country with little sunshine sun is used as a symbol of light knowledge hope and expectation they wanted to be known as british citizens when immigrants reached england they babbled they spoke like a baby lingos i is the first person pronoun the poet asked the readers to imagine the life of him and his love that is to imagine the imaginary life of that immigrants or his or his love's imaginary life could have in england this is referred as tony blair former british prime minister blair in the cash he controversially decided not to use the available restriction to prevent large scale immigration from many new european countries we can understand the fact that politics media and society interconnected to react to it when they are drinking water from the glasses they don't need unparanol and parasol tables by the word britannia he used it to represent the great britain a female figure forming an emblem of a great britain that is britannia actually this poem considers the uncertainty of modern world which is very much in keeping with look we have coming to dover in the poem of matthew arnold dover's dover beach the sea is beautiful calm and tranquil or that means peaceful 
but in the poem of daljit nagra the sea has gobfuls in its flammed water that means dirty water jowers cliffs are crumbling and scummed the immigrants are doing something dangerous fearing a stab in the back or being caught in the spotlight of the moon just as in dover beach the poet turns to his love the use of non english words is an interesting way in which the poet can be seen to seen to be critical of anti immigration ideas and sentiments there are many example for non english such as al fresco that is an italian word camouflage that is a french word readers don't consider such words as foreign because it would show how language has developed or evolved and how it has been realized by modern society another technique is the use of british references and imagery to just oppose with the english non english words and ideas example blared cash bedford van britannia many word choices are important because of their variety of negative connotations this includes phrases like diesel breeds which alludes to pollution and environmental damage as a result of traveling there is also the personification of the rain and the wind as yobish society and culture are important in this poem the poem clearly shows many societal ideas and fears regarding immigration and cultures that are unfamiliar and different the use of words from a variety of languages and their origin is an important way in which the merging of culture is shown different groups and ideologies are merged into this one poem as a result of societal culture and identity differences british identity is expressed through various images and well known references example swamps this word shows how identity can easily be removed and stereotypes applied or used this poem reminds us of the powerful literary heritage of dover the immigrants reached on the shore of england with great hope and expectation the search for a new life in england their language is violent how the people in england would view the coming of the immigrants into their country many people are there to do personal harm or take something from the residents when the immigrants arrive it is not a pleasant experience for them they are not greeted with the beautiful scenery the first thing the speaker notices is the diesel smelling breeze it is not clean even though they are al fresco or out in the open air the speaker describes the tide as part of the scene it is moving with the terrible breeze the contrast and the comparison between the dirty water and the tourist is interesting they power through the water like lords in the cruise ship the waves are ministered it means they obey the need of the tourist the immigrants have to fight against them to make any progress in their life the immigrants are camouflaged making noise and going where they like the speaker also described the scummed cliffs of the shore this is in contrast to the white cliffs related to dover beach in this poem daljit nagra takes models from acknowledged classics of english language poetry using samuel heaney and matthew arnold as predecessors with varying relations to britain this poem is full of humor and charm he explores the realities of multiculturalism in britain He narrates inspirational stories of integration, racial tension, isolation, and redemption. He does not conceal his minority status in any way, as he displays it proudly in every word he uses. This poem is rich in culture, complex in nature, and poetically sharp and precise. He does not abandon his native form of speech. Many word choices throughout the poem are very important due to their varieties of negative connotations. They want to be known as British citizen. For their temporary existence, they try to build tents, and the terrible storm chases them from their tents to their Bedford van. This is an old van popular for the travelers. Through this word, the poet gives a reference of British culture. They are seeking. out lives they want to accept culture they want to settle there they could be bare faced according to the poet they are the illegal immigrants searching for a new life in england they have traveled in the most basic way possible perhaps towed aboard a small ship the immigrants try to maintain their culture throughout this poem they still keep their language in the safe 
necessity of their middle class homes they are able to hope for a better future identity and society are concerned as the main themes they can be seen from the beginning with the comparison and contrast between the coming of immigrants and the presence of tourists they are afraid that they are going to be caught on the spotlight of the moon and return to their home country in this poem the poet uses words like stowed huddled hatched and burdened these words suggest hardships and poverty the miracle of the sun and span its rainbow are natural resources everything that is unnatural is inhuman like polluting the air they have found the natural world it is a hard life they are living they are shocked or stuck between the dark spotlight of the moon and the hope of the sun the immigrants are directly under the observation of the natural world the poet like to describe the immigrants as insect than human beings according to the poet so lift up into england in the gaze of the moon spotlight is humane thank you for watching